Hi there. Welcome to today's webinar um, on computing at Manchester Metropolitan University. Uh, my name is Isabella and today with me I've got uh, members of our academic staff and also one of our recent uh, graduates. So I'm going to start with um, sharing my presentation, giving you an overview, doing some introductions and then we'll go on to the panel and definitely ask questions and we'll go through all of the questions at the, at the very end. You've got your uh, question box there and the chat box um, as well. Um, and yeah, thank you for coming. I'm just going to uh, share my slides and any um, troubles you're having with, with hearing us or seeing the screen, just let us know and we'll do our best to fix it. Okay. Um, Zeynep, are you okay to just confirm that you can uh, see my slides? Yes, we can see Isabella. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so today's uh, IEFT talk is Discover Computing Courses at Manchester Metropolitan University from AI to Cyber Security. So today we've got a fantastic uh, panel uh, joining us. Um, so, um, Ryan, uh, our senior lecturer in data science, um, hopefully will be joining us today, but he's having some uh, troubles joining the webinar, um, but hopefully, hopefully um, he will he will be here with us. Then we've got Katie, uh, our lecturer in cybersecurity. Katie, would you, would you like to briefly introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. So, my name is Katie. I'm one of the lecturers. I primarily teach on cybersecurity. Uh, units at MME on my research is very focused around things like engagement so actually making sure that what we teach MMU and what you learn is all relevant to actually getting you in the industry when it comes to cyber security. Lovely, thank you Katie and uh, Matthew would you would you mind doing an introduction for us? Yes, of course. Sorry. Um, hi, my name's Matthew Shardlow. I'm a lecturer at Manchester Metropolitan University, focusing on machine learning and artificial intelligence, and particularly on natural language processing. Uh, I teach a few different areas, but specifically one of the areas that I do teach is around uh, learning to program. So we teach in a few different programming languages that we can talk about. Uh, through this webinar and also around um, you know, data science and, uh, you know, those kind of areas um, yeah, of teaching. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. And then over to Yusuf, uh, one of our recent uh, graduates. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Yusuf and I got master's degree in cybersecurity from Manchester Metropolitan University. And now I have a job at one of the ministries, a uh, cyber security operations center in Turkey. And I will be talking about uh, my experience uh, during the master degree and hoping that it will be helpful for those uh, considering postgraduate study abroad. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure it will be useful. I'm sure. And um, I'm my son is Bella. Uh, I also, will... Ryan has uh, joined us, so maybe he can introduce himself oh, perfect. too. Perfect. Perfect. Hello, Ryan. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello. We can hear you fine. Oh, he just lost his connection. Ah, uh, okay. Um, well, hopefully he will be um, able to rejoin. Um, but meanwhile, uh, this is kind of the introduction. This is the panel. Um, and I will also introduce you to Manchester Met, give you a kind of general overview. Then we'll go to the panel questions. And we'll look at some course spotlights. So we'll look at some of the main courses in computing we offer. Then we'll go on to research and expertise. So our academic colleagues uh, will give you an introduction to the areas of, of expertise, to their research, their passion. 
then we'll have that Q&A at the end and of course we'll share kind of the contact details and next steps what, what you can do if you're interested in studying with us so uh, my name is Isabella and I look after um, the prospective Turkish uh, applicants uh, so I'm your main point of contact uh, if you have any questions about kind of courses how to apply and and anything else so let me give you a brief introduction to the university so here we are, this is our campus in uh, the heart of Manchester. Uh, it is a really fantastic place to be for a student uh, and our campus is really nicely located to you know, explore the, the rest of the city. So we're quite central and we've got one main big campus. Uh, so it means it only takes kind of five, 10 minutes to walk between buildings or to walk from your accommodation to, to your lecture, uh, which means basically you are um, saving a lot of time and really focusing on, on the most important things. So of course, studying and your, and your student experience. Um, and we've got um, five different faculties. Today we're focusing on the Faculty of Science and Engineering. Um, and if you would like to uh, learn more about the programs, um, there is also, of course, virtual open days um, scheduled for, for May and then for June, depending if you're looking for undergraduate, postgraduate. Uh, so definitely join those as well if you want to learn more about uh, the university and, and also attend like a virtual tour of, of the campus. And a little bit more about Manchester, and I'm sure that our um, academic colleagues will also uh, highlight uh, kind of the importance of Manchester as a tech hub. Uh, but from my perspective, uh, from kind of the student experience, uh, hopefully Yusuf will also be able to add to that, is certainly uh, a great student city many reasons uh, of course it's got a very large student population here we've got three large universities uh, here in manchester it's also a very cost effective um student city and that's probably one of the uh reasons why students choose to study here so it's a large city so you get that large city experience but in you can still do that at a reasonable budget um and it is a very exciting city it's one of the top five european business cities and as we mentioned one of the fastest growing tech cities in Europe um, and it's also appreciated by, by, by uh, here residents and by Mancunians so it's also been voted the best city to live in uh, in the UK actually a couple of years in a row and a little bit about the university itself so we're a large university we've got around 34,000 students um, and a large a uh, network of alumni uh, with us as well um, and of course international students we've got around 3,000 from 130 different countries so a very diverse um, student um, community here and we've invested a lot on, in our campus uh, expanded our research centers and in terms of student experience there's over 150 different sports clubs and societies you can join in addition to of course all your studies um, and of course I'm not going to go through all the history uh, of the university, uh, but I just wanted to highlight uh, some of the key facts. So the university gained its university status in 1992. However, some of our faculties, some of our departments have actually got um, a really proud and long history dating back to the early 19th century. So for example, our Institute of Mechanics opened in 1824. That's the very beginnings of, of the university. Um, and we've got a lot um, of kind of exciting projects still to come. So uh, we're hoping for a new uh, science engineering building. Uh, let me go back to that. Um, in, uh, in a couple of years time. So really investing in, in the science and engineering um, courses here at, at Manchester Med and the facilities uh, to, to that we can offer to students. And in terms of academic excellence, um, Manchester Met uh, has got the TEP Silver um, Teaching Award, um, and that's for the quality of teaching. Um, we're also ranked top 200 in the world uh, in the Young University Rankings, the Times Higher Young University Rankings. Um, and as I've mentioned, we've really been focusing on our research and really improved that. So now uh, around 85% of our research is world leading or internationally excellent, which means we're really making an impact and hopefully you will learn more about that research uh, later on today. And uh, just a very um, quick overview of the Department of Computing and Mathematics. Um, so here you've got a list of the courses that we offer within this area. Uh, so undergraduate, postgraduate, postgraduate research. There's also foundation options. 
Um, and some key highlights here. So we've got excellent facilities and of course more facilities um, to come in the new building. Really great standards. So we're a member of Oracle Academy, which is an academic partner of the Chartered Institute on Information Security. We've got uh, a very strong professional focus linked to the industries um, and focus on employability. And that's all kind of connected with uh, the links we have, also employability events, guest lectures and so forth. And as we've mentioned uh, already, of course, the tech sector is really important. It's important for, for Manchester as, as a city as well. And it's one of the areas within the UK that's certainly growing uh, in terms of job opportunities as well. Um, and when we get to the Q&As, I can kind of expand on the entry requirements, but just very briefly, uh, for uh, foundation entry, we will be looking for your lease with GPA of 3.0. For undergraduate entry, we do accept the lease from um, listed schools, uh, so there is a number of schools where we would accept it directly. Uh, or if you're currently studying uh, at a Turkish university and you've completed your first year, you can also look into, into a bachelor degree with us. Uh, and then for master degree, so postgraduate programs, um, we look for the license for uh, courses that require slightly higher entry requirements. And then um, the minimum really is uh, 2.3 from our university that is uh, listed. So that could be uh, kind of a higher ranked institution in Turkey. So again, it depends on the course you're applying for, but the minimum would be 2.3. And in terms of English language requirements, uh, so undergraduate is 6.0 and postgraduate 6.5 in terms of IELTS. Um, of course, we are um, flexible in terms of um, the impact of COVID-19 on, on English language uh, testing centers. Uh, so we do accept uh, a large number, larger actually, a list of courses uh, and, and tests. Uh, so that includes the IELTS indicator or the TOEFL uh, home edition. Um, and there's a longer list as well available online. So if you're struggling to get your IELTS booked, um, you might be looking for alternatives and we can accept that as well. And uh, just to finish off with tuition fees and scholarships. So in terms of tuition fees, um, I've mentioned in terms of kind of Manchester in general, it is a um, affordable place to study and Manchester Med certainly is. So our fees are kind of middle, um, kind of between the 15 uh, and a half to 17 and a half, depending if you're choosing a bachelor degree or a master degree. Um, so today we're talking, of course, about computing courses. So most of those courses will be uh, priced at the higher range. So either 17,000 for a bachelor degree or 17 and a half uh, for a master degree. And in terms of postgraduate research, so PhD, the, the prices can vary depending on your research. Uh, so I can provide you with more information. Uh, just um, type in, in the Q&A if you're interested in the PhD um, and the cost and I can have a look for you as well. And last but not least is the scholarships. So Manchester Met offers a range of scholarships. So to start with, I'm gonna introduce you to the Vice Chancellor International Scholarships. So these are prestigious awards uh, for students with really strong academic profile. Um, they're only um, available for certain courses um, and the award uh, is between six and eight thousand uh, pounds. So the eligible courses of the ones that will be uh, some of them we'll be talking about today is artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, data science, cybersecurity, um, the BS program, so bachelor program, and another bachelor program, artificial intelligence and data uh, science. There's also sport and exercise science and other um, areas, but these are the ones within computing. And for this special scholarship, you have to put a, uh, an additional application in. For the international scholarships, um, you don't. These are automatic. So undergraduate students receive £2,000 for every year of study, and our postgraduate students receive between two and £3,000. And there are some other external scholarships as well that you might, for example, be able to gain through the British Council. So this is the introduction. Um, and I'll be happy to answer questions, but I really want to get to the main part of, of, of today, um, which is the academic panel. So I'm going to stop sharing um, my screen now and um, go to um, our lovely guests. 
Um, so I wanted to start uh, with just giving Ryan a chance to introduce himself. Ryan, are you okay to just give a short introduction? Yeah, I'll do my best. Um, <laughs> am I audible? <laughs> Good. Hi. Okay. So apologies, I've got connection problems. So hopefully it's um, it's it stays <laughs> for this introduction. So I'm I'm Ryan Cunningham, a senior lecturer in um, in data. Science is my title, but I teach in a, in a few different areas um, around computer science, data science, AI, that kind of thing. Um, so my research um, background is with MMU, actually, in a, a joint project with the School of Healthcare Science. And it's applying AI and computer vision techniques to analyzing um, images, medical images, um, like ultrasound and, and MRI images. Um, I've been a lecturer for two, nearly three years. Um, and yeah, I've been researching around MMU for longer, so like, you know, four years before I was a lecturer. So been around for a while. Um, so yeah, nice, nice to see everybody. Fantastic. Okay, so um, I know that Yusuf is currently at work, so he's got a limited time with us. So I wanted to start with you, Yusuf, and really wanted to find out what got you into cybersecurity. Um, you know, how did that happen? How did that come, come about from all the courses and and kind of areas that, that you could study and work in? Why cybersecurity? All right, yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to mention why I chose cybersecurity, as you mentioned, and as well as the reasons behind uh, my major make decision. So uh, in order to ease understanding, uh, I'm just going to give you my brief background. Uh, right after I got my bachelor degree in electrical and electronics engineering, uh, I decided to start the road with uh, computer networks. Uh, in this direction, I had a job uh, which lasted for a year in this field. Then uh, during this job, I realized that uh, security of digital assets is vital and it will be more and more critical every day. So I also found out that uh, cyber security is broad, dynamic, and evolving area, which means for me uh, excitement, keeping myself up to date, up to date all the time, and job satisfaction. Uh, moreover, uh, considering the speed of the growth in the technology, uh, there have been a vast need for uh, security professionals. Uh, given considering all of these uh, reasons, I I try to I try to find opportunities to get into cyber security field and then I ran, ran across a scholarship opportunity uh, which is about studying abroad and I quitted my job to follow this opportunity and once I got the scholarship uh, my duty was choosing a university and of course getting accepted into it and I took into six main criteria while I deciding the university it may vary people to people, but these were my these are my uh, general ideas. And first, the education language had to be in English, of course. Second, the university had to be in top 500 university in world rankings in competing, of course. And it had to be. I, I think this is the most important thing, uh, most important criteria for me. It had to be a sole strong cybersecurity program. Uh, I mean, not 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 the ones like uh, combined with some other fields. I also dig into class contents, uh, the lecture they gave, and the quality of academic stuff is also important for me. And moving on the next criteria, there had to be a precision English program, uh, which can be prepare me uh, prepare me to my master degree and to the life. In a completely city, completely new city before before the term. And speaking of the city, the economic and the social conditions, of course, uh, of the city. I mean, the universities located are definitely serious indicators for me. Uh, lastly, I want to I wanted to make sure that the university has an international office which welcomes. Uh, international students and provide wide range of facilities for them. Mainly these were the uh, six criteria for me while I deciding the university. Afterwards, I got accepted into a deck of, a deck of university and, and ended up choosing Manchester Met regarding the criteria I just mentioned. And 
yeah when i was when i was minister for the very first time the precision course helped me a lot with getting used to city uh, culture language and most importantly the academic life in the university therefore i i, I really can recommend that take the precessional course uh, that university provide university provide if you can uh, again especially how they prepare you in an academic way is was crucial for me um, another thing master degree in a foreign country could be scary and tough at the beginning However, the staffs were kind and helpful for me all the time, and they were aware of the difficulties you might have. And once you get through these difficulties, every other thing becomes easier. <laughs> and another thing, yeah, since I was a sponsored student, I had to deal with various, I mean, actually many paperwork, and this student help uh, was very helpful and kind for me while providing these papers and yeah again speaking up speaking about the staffs all the lecturers in my classes were sophisticated and they didn't have high ego you can uh, you can ask anything to them about the lecture about the facilities and all other things even if they don't have the answer they they, they can navigate you to find it and therefore, I really appreciate their efforts. I think the best example of it would be uh, would be the relation between me and my supervisor in master project. She she is great, guided me and motivated me during the project, and we're still in touch. Uh, we make video calls on a regular <laughs> basis in order to publish academic papers from my thesis. And lastly, I want to talk about uh, what my typical typical day look, looked like when I studying a master degree in Manchester. Uh, I didn't have classes all in all weekdays. When I have classes, I attended them, of course, and afterwards, I usually used to go to library to practice and repeat what I learned. Um, and uh, according, uh, according to my needs, uh, I used to use uh, computer rooms in the library or uh, labs in the department building. Uh, the computers in the labs uh, in the department building uh, were the most were the most computer uh, most most powerful computers. So, uh, but sometimes uh, they they had classes. But if you can ask kindly to lecture for permission to study there, uh, most uh, I think highly uh, they respond positive. And um, what else? Yeah. Besides from studying, uh, I stayed one of the university's hall, which is very close to the campus. There are many accommodation, actually, many accommodation options uh, that you can consider, including private ones. But I recommend to stay one of the halls if you can, because you'll meet many people who share similar goals with you, uh, and you'll have chance. You'll you'll have a chance to become friends with with people from all over the world. Uh, thanks to that, I have friends uh, from England, North Ireland, Hong Kong, Chile, Cyprus, Belgium, and many, many more. At our spare times, we, when, we did, when we didn't have to study, uh, we, we usually used to go out or do something in the hall. Uh, Manchester actually offers many things to do. We used to hang out and have fun, discover the city, explore the wide range of cuisine around the city. And yeah, I can say I really enjoyed my time there. Uh, yeah, I think that was a summary of my experiences while I was studying at Manchester Med. Uh, I might forgot to mention a few, a few things, but I'm not sure, but if you have any questions, I'd like to answer. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you, Yusef. And it's interesting to hear that you made such a kind of brave decision to to take out time of your work of your career to study study kind of a, a, a master's degree so shall we i'll see if i can pick up any questions that are specifically for you so um yeah. so are there any questions for for yusuf please um if you can just type them in, in the chat box specifically and then um i can direct them to yusuf before he has to go and uh, do a bit of work in cyber security at the ministry <laughs> yeah
we're not I I can I can see any question we have some questions that are more about kind of tier four visas which I've answered there's a question about kind of career opportunities for international students who graduate from cybersecurity program so I don't know Yusuf if you obviously I know that you've got your your role now at the ministry but is there anything else that you would advise in terms of kind of career opportunities or or even um you know if our academic panel um has an idea in terms of um i know it's a growing sector but if 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 you have any kind of ideas um and advice in terms of um career opportunities in cyber security that would be that would be useful that's from etcher um etcher's question oh uh, okay i couldn't see what it's, it's okay yeah yeah, uh, I can I can say that uh, having master degree uh, in foreign country, I mean, it it, it hasn't uh, to be in uh, England. I mean, it would be it would open many doors for you. I mean, uh, it is a really big uh, positive things in your uh, in your CVs. I mean, you can more easily find jobs when you have the master degree in in cyber security you mostly uh, it's it's most probable that you can find a job uh, find a good job actually i can say that um i can add something to that as well um absolutely cybersecurity is growing so quickly and you know people think about cybersecurity as being like oh yeah it's about um, penetration testing or about forensics or well, cybersecurity is about everything like there are so many different routes you can take if you want to go into um, penetration testing you not only have things like network penetration testing you can also learn how to lock pit and do physical penetration testing the sky is really the limit with cybersecurity and you know you've got that kind of more um, what we call red team so uh, offensive operations but you also have defensive as well Yusuf works in a security operation center that is probably one of the most common jobs looking and seeing you know looking at logs understanding what security incidents taking place doing things like incident response where you handle them there are so many different jobs and it's not necessarily like there's one job and it is cyber security it's got so many opportunities and even if you decide you know oh i don't want to go into cyber security exactly you can always take that experience and apply it to other jobs in computing things like programming if you decide you want to go into development cybersecurity is such a strong background to have to really focus on secure development so it's not one of those things where it's like there is one job you can apply for at the very end it's just there's so many and it's across so many different industries thank you katie that's great and uh, let me just see if if there's any other questions that could be directed to yusuf no i don't think so so just Yusuf, before um, before you go, I don't know if there's any kind of advice that you wanted to to give. Uh, we've got probably around 40, 40 people here with us, um, assuming there are 40 kind of keen young people who want to get out there, possibly study abroad um, and get, get that kind of um, education in this specific area. So is there anything that you would, uh, you would advise? Uh, I think I said most of the things, but I can add, uh, if you have a chance, I mean, of course you, you would have uh, some questions on your mind. I mean, you, you might hesitate, but if you have a chance, I said, I, I, I said, uh, take it. I mean, just use it. Perfect. Okay. So we've heard um kind of what uh inspired uh Yusuf to to go into cybersecurity. um it would be interesting to hear about um you know matthews ryan's and katie's uh kind of route to to your your um area so matthew would you would you be able to start and just give us give us an idea of, of how you found yourself um kind of teaching and doing what you're doing so I came to university in 2007 um, and I went to the University of Manchester and studied computer science. And I just really found that I had a love for programming and for 
you know, being able to make a computer do something, um, you know, through something I've written and then seeing the results coming back on the screen. And so I knew that was something that I wanted to uh, to carry on with. And there were lots of different areas of, you know, the programming that I, uh, I had open to me. And I, excuse me, I, after my undergraduate, I had an opportunity to carry on and do postgraduate study. And so I, uh, I took the opportunity and I found myself doing a PhD and I uh, I worked on my PhD from 2011 to 2015 and that was in natural language processing. So doing, um, you know, uh, computer science, but as applied to language. So being able to uh, specifically what I was looking at was making language easier to understand. So uh, a little bit like translating language. Um, I just found that was something that was really interesting to me. And after my PhD, um, I decided that, you know, I had this knowledge and it was something that I'd like to carry on with the research side of things, but also uh, be able to teach and communicate that knowledge as well. And so I was able to move into a, a lectureship position. Uh, following on from that, I was able to, uh, to do that kind of work. That's great. And it's it's a really interesting area, languages and kind of, you know, I think on my uh, couple of trips to Turkey, I probably couldn't do without uh, Google Translate. It's always been uh, very, very helpful. Um, Katie, what about you? I know you've, I kind of had a little sneak peek at your YouTube channel. Uh, oh, I understood that much of what's going on. I'm probably not the best in terms of kind of computing and, and that, but um, yeah, I'm intrigued. <laughs> Um, so, okay. Um, I went to, well, I've been interested in computers since I was like a child. Uh, I remember playing games on the computer and I was very into Neopets as a child. So I'm, I think, fairly on the younger end of kind of the age range you expect academics to be. Um, so I played Neopets as a child and I didn't understand how the computer knew. How did it know how much of the in-game currency I had? How, what, why did that work? So when I was about 11, I learned to program. Um, and then I did it my entire, like all the way up until I finished school at 16. I was like, this is the only thing I'm good at. So this is what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. Big decision to make at 16, but I think it paid off. Um, so I went to college, I did software engineering. I finished college. I did a bachelor's degree in computer science. Um, I finished that in 2017, so fairly recently. Um, went off, worked in industry for a year, and then I went and thought, I hate my job. Um, I had that realization you sometimes have, which is that I'm in a job which is good, but I don't really feel passion for it. And I realized I missed the passion. So I went and did a PhD. My background is actually similar to Matthew's. I actually was in natural language processing. So talking about statistics on text. Um, and I had one PhD I could apply for because I decided I hated my job. Um, at the complete wrong time of the year. So I had one choice and that was with cybersecurity. I never intended to go into cybersecurity. I just kind of ended up there. Um, so I did my PhD and when I was in the second year of my PhD, this was 2019, um, I had the opportunity to go to a HackerOne live event. Now HackerOne is a company um, who does kind of freelance penetration testing and the way it works is that you submit vulnerabilities and then they pay for them that's essentially how it works and they have these live events which is where they bring a bunch of the best hackers from all over the world they fly you out um you get like free travel um free hotel free food you get everything and then you get told make a bunch of money because they pay for finding you you, you find and it was my first time i'd never done any kind of like proper proper cybersecurity. It was quite often more corporate that I'd done before. And I found my vulner a, a vulnerability. I found a vulnerability, a valid vulnerability that an Uber that nobody else had ever found before. Um, so a real company. Since then, I found 30 vulnerabilities, valid vulnerabilities across organizations you've definitely heard of, Verizon Media, Uber, the US Department of Defense. I've hacked the Royal Air Force in the UK. Um, I've hacked media companies, I've hacked um, a uh, airport, um, I've hacked all over the world and found real vulnerability, like I'm not talking here theoretical vulnerabilities, no, these are real vulnerabilities in real software. And um, 
yeah so that started out now i realized that i have this kind of unique background that i'm very passionate about education it's something that's really important to me as like an individual so i started making youtube videos so i not only do academic work and i not only find these kind of valid vulnerabilities in industry um and i also create content teaching other people how to get into hacking and how you can also follow the same path um even if you know you can't necessarily afford professional qualifications, which often the industry is asking for, trying to get people that professional experience. Lovely. Thank you. And um, over to Ryan. How did you find yourself in um, Manchester Med? <laughs> uh, yeah, so my story is not quite as exciting as Katie's. Um, <laughs> but I, first of all, I'm, I'm born and raised in Manchester, so I've never lived anywhere else. So Manchester is my hometown. Um, how I got into computers, um, when I was a kid, I didn't, I really didn't like computers, um, which says something about the state of the national curriculum at the time. Um, I wasn't interested in, in them in the slightest, um, maybe playing games, that, that was where I was sort of interested. Uh, when I was 16, um, I got a little bit of money and decided to get a computer. Um, to increase my employability chances and maybe study them at college, um, but without interest. Um, and what I did with that computer is I, I used to download, probably a lot of people won't know what I'm talking about because of my age, but I used to download um, games which were in a language called QBasic, which is basically a text um, scripting language. And you run these games just by executing the code. Um, and it, wasn't very long um, until I worked out. You just changed a bit of the text or a little bit of the code and you changed the game. So that's what I spent a lot of time doing. And then eventually I made my own game and I found this thing that I loved called programming. Um, and I specialized in that in college. I changed the courses from a BTEC um, to a computer science course and decided I wanted to go into um, study more about AI. Um, the original fascination with was with games AI and, and autonomous characters that walk around in games and how do they do that? How do you get them to, how do you program them up with these simple rules? Um, and then I found AI, uh, which was a lot more sophisticated than, than sort of coding. It's all these methods based on um, biologically inspired methods like neural networks that I gone put into. And I kind of just wanted to get into research from there on. And um, the intention from the beginning was to go and do a PhD was never really interested in industry, was never focused on that. Although when I graduated my uh, bachelor's in 2011, I did do a brief stint in industry doing web apps development. Um, but that was just because um, the sparsity of, of PhD programs or, or funded ones at least. Um, and one popped up quite quickly, which was on medical imaging. Um, one of the things about AI and neural networks is quite difficult to just get a PhD in neural networks. So typically there's got to be an application and medical imaging and something that benefits society it was something that was really exciting and appealing to me so as soon as that popped up i, I joined mmu and the school of healthcare science and computer science um, joint project and did this thing on on uh, medical imaging analysis using computer vision neural networks coding all these kind of skills i picked up over the years um from there i did a little bit of research um i did a postdoc with the school of healthcare science for four years and then naturally just um, graduated over to the computer uh, science side of John Dalton and uh, became a lecturer there, which is, is great. I never thought I would like teaching as much as I, I do, but I, I, I love teaching as much as research now. So that's my story. <laughs> Perfect. So um, you've, you've kind of all mentioned a bit of your, your interest and, and, of course, your, your research. So it might be good to, uh, if you can now, um, introduce some of the courses as well um, that um, that we teach and then um, yeah give us an overview of, of your kind of main research areas so I'll bring up the, the slides now um, I'll share my screen again okay can I just confirm if you can now see the slides Yes, we can see the slides. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so could we have uh, an introduction to, to the undergraduate programs? 
I don't know which yeah, which so, one so of I'll, you. I'll take this. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so so what you can see there are, are three uh, of many courses, um, but these are sort of three themes um, that are particularly popular, I guess. Uh, computer science is a core um, sort of discipline that's been around for a, a long time. We've been teaching computer science concepts for years at MMU. Um, data science and cyber are quite um, uh, increasingly popular now, and they're relatively new. Although saying that, we we have been teaching data science and cyber concepts um, in various forms, um, in the you know through the through the decades. So these are not completely um, new things, but they're the kind of sort of rebranding and, and redesigned uh, courses. Um, so I'll kind of um, try and pick up from the points uh, listed there. So the courses, um, all our courses, are really designed to meet the needs of of industry. Um, so so one point to pick up there is. Uh, I've already mentioned cyber and data science are becoming um, very popular. Cyber is increasingly important because of you know we all live our lives out on the web now, so uh, security is like paramount to to everything in you know relating to machines and, and data. Um, I've mentioned that computer science is core, but um, one thing to say is that all of our courses have some kind of accreditation, um, and accreditation is. Um, basically some kind of uh, professional body which validates and says that our data science course is uh, what you would consider a data science course in professional terms. So it's got all the components of, of a data science course uh, that would be required in terms of skills and professional standards um, in industry. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll just mention a, a few of the names of uh, the, the professional bodies that provide these accreditations because you, you will have heard of them. So Oracle, that's a huge name. Uh, British Computer Society, Royal Society, all names like that that provide accreditation for our courses. And you can get more details, um, you know, or you can ask questions or whatever. Um, so what do the courses look like? Um, so computer science, um, I'll, I'll go through first. Um, but typically, an overarching uh, concept is that in the sort of early years of, of each uh, course, each discipline, whichever uh, route you take, they have some commonalities, some core skills that are required for, for all these different things. So whether you do cyber or computer science or AI, you're going to need programming skills. You're going to need mathematics skills. So these are typically things that you do in the first years, although there will be some specialized components that are not common to all of them. Um, and as you progress through, um, like, for example, in computer science, you'll study in the final years, you'll be looking at programming languages and paradigms more in depth than compilers and how they work, how languages are constructed and designed. Um, you will do some artificial intelligence, so that's not completely uh, separate from data science and AI. So you do do AI concepts and algorithms in computer science, um, and things like distributed computing. Where data science differs, um, you get things like um, high performance computing and the sort of more specialized units, data governance, Deep learning, even you might not expect that for data science, but um, deep learning is a hot topic in neural networks and AI and starting to be applied in all these different places. Like I'll give you one big popular area, um, autonomous vehicles heavily use deep learning algorithms to analyze images on the cameras of all these cars, these Teslas, Tesla vehicles. Um, I'll pick up some of the other points. So uh, projects are you typically encounter sort of mini projects in the early years and then you get a final year project. Projects um, can be linked, uh, as it says there, um, to, to sort of real clients. We have sort of good, strong industry links, so you, you may be working on a real life project for a client. Um, final year projects are typically linked to research at the university. So one of the great things about MMU, uh, one of the things I like about it working there is, is all my colleagues and staff uh, usually have um, active uh, research areas, so they're, they're all out doing research. Um, so what you find there is uh, they sort of list, list or offer projects to final year students that have a research focus. Uh, so in a sense, that's, that's another kind of live project. Um, uh, the final thing to mention on the slide there is there's an optional one year placement, um, which can be sort of, you know, uh, can be good for, for a student to take a year out, take a, a year away from study and then come back. I've known students um, take a year out and come back a lot more confident, a lot more ready um, to continue on and complete their degree. 
Um, I think I've covered everything there. So I'll, I've not mentioned much about cyber there because um, I'm aware, I'm well aware that Kate is on the call and I don't teach much in cyber. So um, if there's any questions about the cyber degree um, that, that um, Katie wants to pick up or if you want to say something now, I can, we can take over. Uh, yeah, I'll just briefly add that the cybersecurity degree is very broad. Um, so you not only cover cybersecurity, you also cover a bit of forensics. So if you want to take your career more in a cybersecurity way, maybe you want to look at kind of red team penetration testing, blue team defensive stuff, you can do that. If you decide, actually, you know what, I want to do forensic work with like digital forensics working with the police and court systems, that's also another route you can take. It's the same degree, um, but there's many different pathways within that. And there's quite a lot of flexibility there for you to pick up on those subjects and really discover the parts of security you're passionate about and take those forward and especially when you start talking about like um like the final year projects and placement stuff there's definitely the opportunity to kind of choose your career if you will and, and figure out what it is that you you're passionate about thanks Katie. thank you so we can hopefully move on to the postgraduate offer I think I'll take this slide. Um, so I've worked with the uh, master's students in a few different capacities in my time here at Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, there's three course titles up there. We do offer a slightly wider range of course titles than this, but these are three that we want to highlight for you guys as courses that we think you uh, you might be interested in. So we have a an MSc program in artificial intelligence where you'll be focusing on all things to do with machine learning, how machines can emulate human intelligence. Uh, we have MSc in data science where you'll look at big data, high performance computing, high throughput computing, how do we um, do this kind of large scale data processing, but how do we do that in a scientific way as well? So it's really important not just to process the data, but to do that in a way that is uh, is rigorous, is empirical, and uh, you know gets kind of reliable, reproducible results as well. And also we have a MSc cybersecurity program. You've heard a little bit about the BSc cybersecurity program, and this is an extension of that, giving a, a more in-depth uh, analysis of the of the topics in cybersecurity there as well. Um, in terms of structure of the master's program, so you'll study four separate units on the master's program. Each unit is a, you know, a different section of teaching. You typically have a different lecturer for each one of your units and you have an assessment for each one of those units as well. Uh, and this just allows us to divide up the teaching, allows us to um, you know, separate out different topics. You'll do two of those between uh, September and December, and then you do another two of those between the January and the kind of May time. And then you also have a research project. This is independent research. And at the master's level, we expect you to do some kind of academic research, which is going to be something novel, something interesting, uh, something that, you know, based in the literature and uh, really tells us something interesting or finds something new for us. The way we, ha the way we manage these projects, um, we pair you up with a lecturer who shares some kind of interests of, uh, of what you're working on. You can look at the different kinds of topics that the lecturers are working on. And then that lecturer will supervise you through your project and uh, you know, work together with you. We often, um, you know, we use these projects. So as lecturers, we use these projects to try out new ideas or to get you working on projects that we know are going to be interesting and impactful and will uh, sort of be uh, something useful. I've worked previously with my master's students to, uh, to publish research off the back of their projects as well. So I have publications with master's students. As uh, Yusuf was saying, he has uh, been engaging with his supervisor after his master's course to publish things out of his thesis, which is you know, a real bonus to your CV as well, if you can say, you know, well, as well as doing my, uh, my degree, I also was able to make a contribution to the academic community as well. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what we want you guys to get to. We want you to be able to uh, 
you know, operate at that very kind of high level if you're able to do the uh, the master's program with us. Just having a quick look at these things on the slide here. So you do have the option to do a one-year placement as part of your master's. So the typical master's course is either one year full-time or two years part-time. You can also do a one-year full-time with a one-year placement as well as part of your master's. Obviously, this is great for employability if you can you know, get a job whilst you're studying and do that placement year. It just gives you an opportunity to uh, you know, be placed in a business and see how the kind of things that you're learning in university are transferable outside of the university context. Um, you can also, um, yeah, so you can also do uh, work with companies as part of the masters as well. So this year on the data science uh, masters program, we've actually had two different companies, both uh, big international companies headquartered in the UK and around Manchester. Um, and we've brought those in and we've asked them to kind of give us data sources. So they've given us, uh, you know, some of their data and they've just asked our undergraduates to, to work on that data and to, you know, tell them something interesting about that data. And it's actually a really great employment opportunity to put yourself on the radar of some of these larger companies and to get some experience of working, you know, on the kind of problems that uh, the industry uh, partners are interested in as well. So yeah, it's a very strong program and we really do produce some very strong uh, graduates out of there that do go on to work in uh, you know, big businesses as well. You can see some of these listed here. So Google, uh, banking sector, uh, et cetera. So you know, there's real opportunities off the back of the master's course there. Classic, thank you. And um, just before we go on with the slides, um, just gonna see, um, just gonna see about the questions we've got, and if there's anything that we could pick up from, uh, from that. Um, okay, so uh, Zainab is interested in computer science, but does not have the academic background. Um, I know that one of our programs, I believe, um, computing programs is actually suitable for those students with non um, kind of computing backgrounds. Um, which which of the masters uh, is it? I don't know if I know I that there is would be one. MSc computing. MSc computing. Okay. So yeah, we that also have a foundation degree. Uh, program which is people who don't have the computer science uh, background and that's at bachelor's level. Perfect so yes so two options depending on kind of where you are in your in your I guess studying career either the foundation or if you've already completed the bachelor and it's not relevant to computing you can take the MSc computing. Um, okay sorry um, just to pick something up on yes. that um, I can't be I can't be 100%, but I believe the data science MSc unit as well doesn't require a strong computer science background. I know because I've taught a bunch of them and a lot of them come from biology and business and different sort of um, backgrounds. So that's another so consideration. Options. Okay, um, so we've got a question from Ibrahim. Um, who says those programs, AI, data science, etc., seem to be related to computer engineering or related uh, programs. Do you think an instructor of English can be admitted to one of those programs and thrive without having computer software literacy? So again, I think Ibrahim, this would be um, this would be possibly an option for you to either consider the MSc uh computing or uh possibly the msc data science and so i don't know you've you've ryan mentioned that you've had uh, students from different backgrounds um how, how do they go on 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 the courses how do they um it, you know take up the completely different area um i think i think the that's related to interest and and commitment um the, the in general um those students that don't have a strong computer science background can find some things difficult, but if the work is put in, they, they do get there, they do make it. Um, they, to, to mitigate against people um, who don't have quite the, the right background, there's a lot of foundational content in the course about teaching basic Python programming and working with um, you know different packages that you need for, for data science. So there's a lot of introductory type content to bring people to the right level. And, and then, of course, there's lots of advanced content to, you know, get people ready and able for industry and uh, data science type roles. 
So there is definitely kind of ways um, to, to get in into a new new environment. I think some of you have already mentioned that you've kind of you know chosen different paths and veered off and and, and kind of adjusted to to your interests. So um, let me see if there is anything else before we go on. No, I think the rest I will try to answer the rest of the um, questions kind of separately because these are around kind of IELTS and um, do we need IELTS score and valid TOEFL score? Yes, you would need so 6.5 will be required um, in terms of the IELTS for masters. Um, and what else I can kind of add on here? I think that's that's it. So I'll try to. I know we've got kind of five minutes left, so it'll it'll have to be a um I guess a short introduction to to what we've got left to the to the kind of research interest. So I will bring the um the slides back in, uh, and I will also make sure that you've got uh, my contact details as well, so that. Um, if there are any questions that are not answered here, um, definitely, definitely contact me. Uh, I'm here to to answer all I can, and and if not, uh, I have I kind of the opportunity to to get answers from my lovely colleagues as well. Um, okay, so I'm just typing that form in uh, for all of you, so you can leave your your contact details through the form here. And going back to sharing. Okay. Right. Are we are we okay now for the slides? Can we all see the exciting three projects we've got going on? Yes, we yep. can. Yeah. Lovely. Um, since we don't have much time, I'll be quite brief when I talk about these. Thank um you. so these are three projects which go kind of across the university. And actually it's not even just computer science for things like cyber foundry it is very much like engaged across the university um so the first one here is the institute of coding which is all about digital skills and um, developing people the two big ones the cyber foundry and the ai foundry are really exciting because they involve speaking to businesses in greater manchester and working with them to improve um the kind of general security of greater manchester so that's not just like oh, we theoretically work with companies. No, we actually work with real companies and help develop. And um, these are also projects that if you are so inclined, you may be able to get involved in as well. Um, so the Cyber Foundry is focused on cybersecurity and cyber skills and um, secure software practices. And the AI Foundry is the same kind of idea, but AI, it's not just um, cyber, not just, um, uh, so like us there's also the school of business who quite often involves uh, engages with the uh, companies so yeah there's just introduction to three of the uh, big projects we have going across the university lovely thank you katie and now um over to ryan i think he's just dropped ah so katie do you want to pick up yeah, so this is kind of my research projects. Um, like I said before, you may in fact already know who I am. Um, I have a real world impact with my work. Like I've been featured, this is from the Wall Street Journal. I've also been featured on the BBC, um, ZDNet. I've had a, um article with, I've also um, spoken to the Telegraph, like very much um, kind of media engagement side of things. Um, and quite often my work involves, you know, how do we support existing practices within cybersecurity without trying to sit there and replace the expertise that's already there? How can we improve things but not try and take it over? Um, so quite a lot of my work revolves around that, around engagement, around media, around um, getting people into cybersecurity and also in actually finding real vulnerabilities in real software. Like these aren't just theoretical problems these are actual vulnerabilities that exist in 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 large organizations there matthew wants to go for his uh, introduction there you go matthew uh sure thing in one minute um so i've already said a bit but 
little bit about NLP and AI. Just a few areas that I've been interested in working in over the past few years. So text mining of large corpora. So, you know, you have, uh, you know, 100,000 research papers and you want to find out the important things in those papers and we can, you know, run AI software over that to do that. I'm uh, very interested in language simplification. So uh, taking difficult texts and making those easier to understand for a uh, for an end user, uh, particularly in educational contexts as well. Uh, I've done some work recently on emoji semantics. So we all, you know, we text. I can see in the chat that everybody using emojis and these are great and very interesting and very uh, sort of usable and interpretable by humans, but very difficult for machines to interpret to know what they uh, what they actually mean, especially in the the varied usages of emojis. So, trying to understand and quantify and uh, have machine understandable ways of uh, knowing those. And I've also been working a little bit on this is NLP apps for CBT as well, so around. Uh, psychology and natural language processing and developing you know concrete applications that can be uh, be used that's actually an internal collaboration here at uh, manchester metropolitan with the school of psychology as well so just a, a very quick area overview of some of the areas that i am interested in there but i won't say any more about that <laughs> lovely and i think it's interesting to see and to hear the, the kind of collaboration between lots of different areas. So even, you know, different faculties, different departments are on board. So I think that's one of the one of the advantages as well, of being part of Manchester Med and it's such a large institution that there's always kind of that, I think, that interest in, in collaborating. And um, do we have Ryan on board? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry oh, about my connection. No worries. No worries. I was just wondering if you wanted to <laughs> give us a couple um, a couple more details on, on the research and projects. I know you've mentioned it, but um, just to highlight some of the possibly the, you know, the, especially the health um, kind of related um, projects. I think these are really interesting. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do it uh, sort of sort of briefly. Um, you know, my, my interests are generally in sort of AI and um, more specifically it's in neural networks and you know a, a bunch of things around that involving machine learning methods. Um, more recently I've gotten into symbolic regression and some other things like physical modeling. Um, when I say their interests um, that you know some of these things I've actually actively worked on and some things I'm working on now and don't have publications and things but um, research area goes i guess that's where i've published in and that's where i work in so um mmu has a bunch of themes which change all the time mm -hmm. people collaborate in different ways but i'm part of the human centered computing group um hcc so that that's basically computing that uh, is revolves around sort of trying to improve um healthcare and and sort of things for people for human um, beings um so all my medical image stuff falls in that sort of category um, so two specific things uh, just to mention I've got two little snapshots of, of research that I've done and the, the papers are there if you want to look at them in more detail um, we work locally with a hospital um, Salford Royal Hospital just not too far away from MMU uh, we work with the clinical neurologists there um, and we developed an ultrasound system based on deep learning I won't say too much the, the figure in the paper is there um, but the, the point of that is to try and so be able to analyze and um, detect sort of problems with uh, muscles just using ultrasound, which is a non-invasive technology. It's, a, it's an imaging technology that can see inside the body without any radiation or any pain or anything like that. So we're doing clinical trials with that group, um, with those group of clinicians um, very shortly. We've got publications with them. And the last one is a tool we're developing, which, which we've got a big load of funding from the Medical Research Council and that's relating to the second image there those images are actually color images but we cartoonized the, the children in the images to protect their identity um so those would be color image analysis um, and what you can see is the is a neural network doing an analysis of the motion of all the different parts of that child's body so we're developing a physiotherapy tool as part of a, a funded project with the medical research council and that's uh, broadly that's my research fantastic so a really wide variety of, of things you, you've been working on and things that interest you. And 
I just wanted to say thank you. Um, thank you to Matthew, Ryan, and, and Katie for uh, for coming along and and bringing you closer to to those areas, and especially giving you some ideas of the real projects and the real stuff we're working on. And it's not just academia; it is actually real life industry um, and real life impact. And and thank you to Yusuf as well uh, from bringing that student experience perspective, and um, and of course to Zainab for for organizing this and. Just last but not uh, not least, um, please do ask questions. I'm here to help. Um, so you've got my email address there. You can scan the QR code. You can join us on social media as well, um, where you can find out more that kind of what students are actually up to. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. I know we don't probably have that much time to answer any questions. Uh, we've got the clock ticking with with Zainab, but anything that's not answered. I'm going to make a note of it now and I will email you afterwards. So all the students who've um, left the questions, I will follow up um, with an email after the session. Yes, thank you very much for your great presentation, Isabella. Uh, we had a lot of questions and you covered them all. Thank you for your answers, Matthew, Katie and Ryan and Yusuf. Uh, it was a really comprehensive and informative webinar for the attendees. Uh, and I would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. Manchester Metropolitan University ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için Isabella'nın paylaşmış olduğu mail adreslerinden iletişime geçebilirsiniz. Aynı zamanda sizi altıdaki webinarımıza da davet etmek isteriz. Thank you again you guys. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, yeah, keep safe and um, make sure you um, as well just look after yourselves. Yeah, good. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.